Coming up on today's video, an entire week of corn on the Mary's Mini. You're absolutely gonna love this right after the intro. Welcome back to another episode of Plant-Based Dads. I'm Joey. We are a mostly whole food, vegan cooking channel. We do some product reviews. Sometimes there's some episodes with Tim, baking with Tim, fermenting with Tim, sprouting with Tim. If you like what you hear so far, please hit that like button, show us some love, and please think about subscribing and becoming part of the Plant-Based Dads family. If you like getting our videos every Monday, you can get them early before everyone else does. Become a Patreon member. Patreon members are our team members who work with us with monthly donations to support the show and allow us to bring the message to, you know, the plant-based message out to the public. And they get our videos uh, 24 hours early. If you're interested in working with us and becoming part of the Plant-Based Ads team, there's a link below the video on how you can become a Patreon member and become part of the team. Just a note to those of you who follow us for the DIY uh, episodes, we are moving all of the DIY episodes and all future episodes are now going to be on uh, our new DIY channel, DIY Project Guys. There's a link right here. So uh, head over to that channel if you like the DIY stuff that we do and uh, subscribe to that channel. You get notified every time we have a, a new video over there. Uh, recently, we have a, a new uh, privacy wall on our gazebo that we built, and we put the video up over there. It's really interesting. Today's video, I'm gonna talk about my recent Mary's Mini. Every month in the Facebook group, we have a Mary's Mini challenge. The next one is going to be on Monday, May 24th. That'll go through the end of May, so about an eight-day challenge. The Mary's Mini is one of the Dr. McDougall programs. And on that particular uh, diet, because it is a diet, you do a short-term diet, usually 10 days. But again, in our group, it's depending on how many days of the month are left. And you pick one starch. And most people seem to pick uh, rice or potatoes. And I've done both of those. I've, I've done before, and I've posted a video on it. So recently, when we did this, I wanted to do a corn mini. I'd never seen anyone do a corn mini. I didn't know what I would eat, but I thought it would be really fun to just do something different. And that's what I'm gonna go over with you today. So we're gonna talk about a week of corn, what meals I had, how I made them, some of the things that worked, some of the things that didn't. I'm gonna talk about all of my food on this week of corn. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed just about everything I made, and I can't wait to show you. Let's get to the food. The first thing I did was made some breakfast for the week, and breakfast was grits. I started with the sauce pot and added three cups of filtered water. Then I turned on the heat to high. I added just a little pinch of salt, and then a teaspoon of no salt seasoning. I'm using this one right here from Costco. I waited for a few minutes till that came to a boil, and then it was time to add the grits. I'm using this one right here. I'm just gonna put in one cup of grits, and these are the instructions on the packages exactly, so the, the directions are on the package. I'm gonna put the grits in just a little bit at a time until I get it all in. And I'm gonna start mixing it up with the whisk. I'm gonna bring that up to a boil and then I'm gonna lower the heat to simmer. Now I'm gonna let it cook for about five minutes until all of the water is absorbed by the grits. Now I'm adding in a quarter of a cup of nutritional yeast. And you can see right here the texture. I mean, this looks like grits. It doesn't have the white milky uh, look like you would get in the south, but the texture is correct. After the five minutes is up, I turn off the heat and remove it from the heat. Then I put on the cover and I'm gonna let it sit for five more minutes. After the five minutes is up, I'm gonna stir it up one more time just to make sure it's all combined. And at this point, it's ready to eat. I'm just gonna give it a little taste to make sure it's good. And let me just tell you, it was amazing. That no salt seasoning really did it. Now I'm gonna take the grits, put it in a container uh, so I can have it throughout the week. Next, it's time to plate up breakfast. So I've got a really nice little uh, bowl here from Costco. I got a beautiful set of these. And I'm gonna dish out some of the grits. And now I've got some air fried Brussels sprouts that I made uh, a couple of days ago that are kind of left over. And then I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of extra corn on there in the form of some corn kernels. And now I'm sprinkling on some pepper on top just for flavor. I know it's hard to see in this video, but this is a really big bowl. I had some form of this every day for breakfast during the Mary's Mini. Here you can see I'm having the same thing, but I've got my seasoned broccoli. Absolutely delicious. And that was breakfast all week. For lunch, I wanted a polenta pizza. So I'm going to make my toppings first. I've got a nonstick skillet here. I'm just adding a little bit of water because I'm not sauteing with oil. I'm gonna add some uh, minced garlic here just to kind of get it going. And then after that, I'm gonna put in some cherry tomatoes that are, you know, quartered. And a little bit of broccoli florets. These are just frozen broccoli florets that I cut up. And then I've got some uh, corn that I shaved off the kernel. Since it's a corn mini, I'm just having corn on everything. These are my toppings for the pizza. I'm just gonna water saute these in medium heat 
until the tomatoes start breaking down and become kind of smashed. Uh, that's when you know they're kind of heated and ready to go. You could just throw these on the pizza raw, and people do that, but if you look at right here where I'm pointing, you can see the tomatoes are all broken up. This is absolutely the way I like my toppings on the pizza. Here I'm just scraping the bottom to make sure nothing's stuck, and I'm just gonna take it off the heat. The toppings are done. Next, I made another pot of polenta the same way I did before. You can see right here, it's creamy and ready to go. Then I've got a spring foam pan. I've cut a piece of parchment paper to the shape of the bottom of the pan, and now I'm dumping some of the polenta right into the bottom of the pan. This is gonna form my crust. I'm gonna use a spatula to spread it all out to make sure I have a nice little thin crust here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want it to be flat enough to accept the toppings. Next, I'm gonna take some oil-free marinara and just layer it on the bottom here. I don't want it to be too thick. I don't like a lot of sauce on pizza. I like the toppings to really be the flavor, but I'm gonna lay the sauce on just to, to kind of coat the bottom so uh, the toppings have somewhere to sit. And next, I'm just taking my uh, skillet and I'm dumping the toppings right in. I'll be honest with you here, this was not enough toppings. This spring foam pan was a lot bigger than I thought it was. It's a nine inch, so I should have made double the toppings. But I did make these work, and as you can see here, it really looks great. Next, I put it in the oven and let it bake. All of the directions will be in the description below the video. And then here you have it, I've got my beautiful polenta pizza. Now, I'll be honest with you here, if I were to make this again, I would bake the crust first and then put the toppings on. Everything in me told me that I needed to do that, but I watched multiple videos on YouTube on this and nobody did that, so I didn't do it, even though I know I needed to. So when I cut this, it really wasn't firm. It was kind of a mushy crust. I still ate it, I just grabbed the spoon and ate every bit of this and it was absolutely delicious. But when you make this, in order to get the, the crust to be a pizza crust type, you're definitely going to want to pre-bake the crust first. All in all, folks, it was absolutely delicious, and I wasn't complaining. Now it's time for dinner. One of the reasons I chose corn is because I could have tacos every night, and I'm going to show you how I did it. The first thing we needed for tacos was tortilla shells. Here, Tim's making his own tortilla shells. He's starting with one and a half cups of water, then he's adding two cups of Masaka brand corn masa flour. Now Tim's using a spoon to mix it to get it combined, and you'll see it's starting to form into a little bit of a dough here. At this point, he's done with the spoon, and he's just using his hands to treat it like a dough. He's kind of shaping it and kneading it, uh, and you can see it looks just like a regular dough at this point. Now he's gonna put a wet towel over it and let it sit for a little while. Next, he's gonna take the towel off, give the dough a little pinch, make sure it's ready. He's gonna wet his hands here to make sure that uh, the dough doesn't stick to his hands, and he's just gonna knead it a little bit more just to get it pliable and it's ready to go. He's taking a one quarter cup measure and he's putting uh, the dough into little one quarter cup balls. So he'll, he'll scoop some out and then he's just gonna rub it around together to try and get it into a ball shape. Now we're breaking out the tortilla press that showed up from Amazon about a week ago. Don't ask. And Tim's showing you that he's got these pre-cut rounds of parchment paper that are made specifically for this. We're gonna lay out the parchment paper and the dough and then he's just gonna put the top on and then use this handle thing to press it down and that kind of flattens the dough into a tortilla shape. Then he lifts it up, moves it about 180 degrees, puts the press back down, and represses it again. And this, apparently, is how you make fresh homemade tortillas. Don't they look great? Next, it's time to cook them up. We've got a skillet on low heat, and we're just kind of dropping it in there and moving it around to try and get it to brown. When you see the edges starting to pucker up a little bit, it's time to flip it over. Here you can see Tim kind of moving it around and just trying to get it to cook. After a little bit, you're gonna flip it a third time. On the third time, the tortilla should start to puff up. You should start to see the dimensions happen. You can see right here that it's almost turning into a pillow. It's fluffing up. That's when you know it's done, and that should happen on the third time. We're gonna lift this off here and put it on a plate. It's ready to go. Now we've got a whole plate of these tortillas. You want them to brown a little bit just like this, and they look absolutely beautiful. These are ready for tacos. Now it's time to make a taco filling. The main part of this filling is gonna be our cauliflower taco meat. We've got a saucepan with some water in it. Then we're gonna add four cups of rice cauliflower. We just bought rice cauliflower at Costco frozen and thawed it out, so that's all this is. We're also adding a tablespoon of smoked paprika, then one tablespoon of chili powder. We're also adding a half a tablespoon of garlic powder and a half a tablespoon of onion powder. Now we've got a teaspoon of cumin going in, and I'm gonna mix that all around to kind of get the uh, spices combined here. You can already tell it's gonna be great. Look how nice that looks. All of this taco meat, I don't know what else to call it, is all cauliflower based. Now we're adding three tablespoons of soy sauce. I'm using coconut aminos here. And I'm just gonna use my spatula to mix that in. Everything we put in this taco, including this taco meat, is going to be a vegetable. The shell is the corn and the starch in our meal. 
Now I'm going to saute this for about five to seven minutes until this is all hot. If you have to add some water to this, then do it. You don't want it to burn, but you shouldn't need to. And you can see here, it's ready to go. I'm going to take this cauliflower taco meat and I'm going to put it into a little glass container here so I can have it throughout the week. This lasted me about five days with two of us eating tacos every night. We didn't need a lot. It was just a little bit in each taco along with all the toppings. So this was a really good size for the two of us for this entire mini. Now it's time to assemble. Here we are with one of those beautiful tortillas we made from scratch and we're adding in some of the cauliflower taco meat. Next I'm adding in some lettuce on top and now I'm sprinkling in some chopped tomatoes. Now I've got a little bit of salsa on here. Then I'm going to take this and throw it in the taco plate so I can finish dressing it. Now I've got some shredded cabbage I'm adding on top and I've got some corn being put on there. And you can see here I'm just adding some uh, hot sauce on top of my tacos. And I'm going to serve it with a salad even though there's a lot of lettuce with the Dijon mustard maple syrup dressing. And I'm topping that with some shredded cabbage and kind of the same topping. And I've got a little cilantro on that too. Also a little corn and some red onions. You can see here folks, a beautiful meal, lots of greens, all based around the, the starch of the taco shell. So my meals looked really great, but what did I have for snacks? Well, the first one I wanna show you is polenta sticks. This is the same grits recipe I had for breakfast. I'm just dumping it into a bread pan right here. I'm using my spatula to kind of flatten out the top so it's all even. After that, I took the pan and put it in the refrigerator for an hour to let it cool. Once that was cool, I dumped it out onto a cutting board and the polenta should be gelatinous here. Next, I took a very sharp knife and started cutting it into slices. I'm gonna be making sticks or fries out of this, so I'm keeping that in mind as I cut this. Then I laid them out flat and started cutting them the long way to cut them into the fry shape. Next, I took out a baking sheet and I laid some parchment paper over it. Then I very carefully laid out each one of these polenta sticks onto the baking sheet. I was able to get the entire loaf onto one baking sheet. Next, I started my seasonings. I sprinkled it with onion powder. Then I sprinkled plenty of garlic powder. I mean, polenta is Italian, right? Next, I'm adding some paprika, just because I love the red color on the yellow fries. And you can also add some nutritional yeast on this if you'd like also. I popped them into a 400 degree oven for 30 minutes. I did not flip them. I just baked them the way they were. After 30 minutes, you can see here, I'm just taking them out one at a time. They're a lot firmer now, and they're not so delicate. I'm just kind of forging a little circle around uh, the perimeter of the plate here. And then I'm gonna drop in a little ramekin of oil-free marinara. Look at that, folks. How beautiful does that look? This was an amazing snack, and I ate every bit of this. Delish. Another favorite snack for this corn mini was the corn salad I made. It was absolutely delicious. I started with four and a half cups of corn kernels that I cooked on the cob and then just sliced them off. I'm also adding one diced red onion, about a quarter of a cup of fresh cilantro that I diced up, and then about two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. You can use one or two tablespoons, I used two. And then I'm adding the juice of an entire lime. Then I'm gonna grab a spoon and mix all that together. And you can see it's really simple. I mean, it's just corn and some veggies in it. I'm gonna give it a taste to make sure it's uh, up to par here. And it's ready to go. Now I've got this beautiful serving bowl from the 99 cent store. You know how I love the 99 cent store, right? And this was a great find. I'm gonna dish out this uh, salad. I'm gonna spread this salad around and I'm gonna add some limes. I took a lime and I sliced it all up uh, just for some garnish. And there you have it, folks. I mean, an absolutely beautiful corn salad. All right, so for my last snack, I'm gonna show you how I made tortilla chips and homemade pico de gallo. These are the tortillas that we made on the tortilla press. I'm gonna cut them in half and then I'm gonna cut them into uh, quarters. So I'm gonna get, uh, each tortilla will give me eight pieces, right? Now I'm just gonna kind of separate them and make sure they all cook correctly. And then I'm gonna toss them into a mixing bowl here. And I'm gonna add a little bit of spices. Here I've got just a bit of garlic salt, some red pepper flakes, some paprika, and the juice of half a lime. Then I'm gonna use my hands just to kind of mix all this up to get it coated. Then I'm gonna put in the air fryer at 390 degrees for 20 minutes. I'm gonna shake them halfway through to make sure they cook evenly. And then I'm just gonna dump them onto a plate and keep going till I have all the chips cooked. Now I'll be honest with you here, I cooked them this way and I also cooked them in the oven. They did come out much better in the oven. I think if you're gonna make them and eat them right away, then the air fry is fine. But if not, then the oven gives you a much more longer, crispy lasting effect. Next, it was time to make the pico. We started with about four or five diced tomatoes and then added two diced jalapenos. Next, we added one diced red onion and some diced up cilantro. Here, we're adding a bunch of air fryer cooked corn, but you can use frozen corn for this. That would be fine too. And we're also adding the juice of one lime. We're gonna sprinkle in a little salt and some black pepper to taste. 
We also added three to four cloves of garlic, but that wasn't shown here. We took our spatula, gave it a nice mix, and you can see it looks like a picture perfect pico. Now we've got our little plate here with the pico. I'm adding the chips. I've got a beautiful yellow plate, but Tim decided that yellow wasn't a great color for this and that we needed a green plate. So here we are switching over to the green plate, which makes no sense, but here it is. As you can tell, I was right. The yellow plate was better, right? You do agree with me, don't you? And we're taking a little taste test here. Look how great those chips look. I don't think he got much on there, but it actually is really good. You can just have to go with us on this. A beautiful plate of chips and pico. This is my kind of diet. I swear, every time I do one of these minis, I feel like I learn so much about myself. Speaking of learning, I want to give a huge shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. For those of you who don't know, Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of inspiring classes for creators, allowing you to explore new skills, deepening existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Their extensive range of classes include everything from oil-free cooking to knife skills to vegetable gardening 101, all without any advertisement so you can focus on learning and growing. The classes are short. They're designed for real people with real lives, and it's also very affordable, coming in with an annual membership of about $10 a month. I'm currently taking Mark Barnacle's Learn Guitar, the complete beginner's guide on Skillshare. One of the things I got out of taking Mark Barnacle's guitar class was I realized that how little time I was allowing for myself for my love of music. I've been tinkering with my guitar for years, but I've never really made a commitment because of everything that's involved in the traditional way of classes. Now I can do this on my own terms and on my own time. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, they're offering you, the plant-based ad viewer, a free trial to Skillshare's premium membership to the first 1,000 people that join. So you can explore your creativity just by clicking on the link in the description below this video. So this means, for absolutely free, you get access to every single class on Skillshare, including their new live classes. So while you're at it, you can check out Mark Barnacle's Beginner Guitar class or any other class. All right, so that's our video for today. An entire week of corn on the Mary's Mini. What other diet can you eat tacos every night and chips and salsa whenever you want? Yeah, baby! If you like this video, please hit that like button. Show us some love. What's not to like? If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Click on the bell. You'll get notified every time we have a new video, usually every Monday. And please leave a comment below. Have you thought about doing a corn mini? Did you realize that you could eat tacos every night on this thing? I mean, when I realized that, it was a really simple decision. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.